Hey there. Welcome to another uh, Slightly Redneck video. I'm um, working on a pretty cool project here today and I thought I'd just uh, videotape it and do a little how-to. What I'm going to do is uh, hook up this controller right here into this box and put this receptacle in here. And uh, one side of this receptacle, if I plug a, a heat lamp into that, um, run this remote probe that hooks into this unit, then I can maintain a certain temperature like in a brooder box for some quail or you know, if you're a home brewer, I know a lot of these guys use these things for like kegerators and stuff. You could use it to build uh, incubators, you could use it to build um, all, all kinds of things. Fermentation, uh, you know, cases like out of a cooler. Um, you just run a wire, set the temperature you want, it'll turn a heat lamp on and keep it warm. The bottom side of this receptacle could be used to run some, like a fan or a compressor or something like that to keep something cold. So like when you're storing quail eggs or chicken eggs and you want to keep them at a certain temperature, um, you can run fans off of this stuff based on uh, temperature. When it gets above a certain temperature, it'll kick on and, and run those fans. So anyway, um, this is an Inkbird uh, ITC-1000F controller. You can buy them on Amazon for, I don't know, 10 or $12. I think I, I, think I paid 15 for this one. Um, you're going to need a, a plug, a receptacle, that uh, you can buy at any box retail, probably Walmart even, for about $2. Um, you're going to need an extension cord. So I got a six foot extension cord. Um, this is 16 gauge wire. Make sure you get 16 gauge wire. Um, you can get 8 foot, 12 foot, however long you want. And honestly, uh, this was like $2, but I think if anything I would have got a longer cord. This is a little bit shorter. Um, and that's about it. Uh, we're going to get going on this. You're going to need a couple of tools and you'll need a project box, of course. I'm going to use this ammo can just because I think it's cool. It'll make people ask questions. So that's why I'm going to use it. So uh, I'm going to bring you around here. I'll show you uh, kind of how to get all this stuff wired up. And uh, we'll get going. All right, first thing you're going to want to do is figure out whatever project box you're going to use. Like I said, I'm using this old ammo can. Um, cut out your holes so that your units will fit in there. Um, that's going to slide right in there. All I did was just turn it upside down like that, draw a hole, cut it out. Uh, with, the, with the plug, I'm going to mount it right here, but I'm going to mount it from the underside. So let me open this up. I'll show you what I mean. So it's going to mount like this in here. So the way I cut those holes is, let me grab this. Is I took a wall plate, like it like goes on your wall. Um, you can just take one off your wall if you want. I laid it down on there. I drew the holes out. I cut them out with my Dremel, and then I switched to a sanding disc, and I kind of just sanded a little bit, tried to fit this where it wouldn't fit. I sanded a little bit more, just kind of snuck up on those holes. So it, it worked pretty well. Uh, then I took this and laid it upside down, drilled holes through the, uh, the mounting brackets, and I've got some uh, little bolts with a nut that I'm going to feed through and, and bolt onto the back side of that. So you can probably figure that out. So um, I've cut my, I've already done some preparations here. I've taken my extension cord and just cut the end of it off. Cut the female end and I've got it sitting right here. Make sure you cut the right end. Um, you could leave it fairly long if you want to get away really cheap because you can use all this wire right here to do your splicing inside the box. I actually have some other wire because it's much easier to see on the video to, to show you how to wire it up. So anyway, once you do that, I uh, drill a couple of little holes here and fish that wire through the inside so it's, it's coming out the inside. Stick it through here. And I stripped off the end of this wire, just, just that much. Uh, make sure you know which side of your wire is hot and which side is the neutral. On this wire, there's no color. Usually you'll have um, like, a, like a dash or a line or something like that down the side of the wire to show you um, which wire is the neutral wire. But on this wire, it's ridged, so you can feel, you can't see it, but you could feel it easily. There's a ridge that run down the side of this wire. This is the neutral side, this is the hot side of this wire. If you have three wires and they're color-coded, usually you're going to have red or black as your um, hot wire. You're going to have white uh, code, or let me show you what I mean. Red would be a hot wire, white would be a neutral wire, black is usually a hot wire, and then uh, if you have a, a, a green wire, that's a ground. So we'll, we'll get to that stuff here in just a little bit. Same thing, uh, take your temperature probe, uh, drill a couple holes in your project box and fish that wire through there because you're going to need to make connections to it, let me get it through here, to the unit as well. So that's it so far. Let me uh, get rearranged here and I'll show you how we, uh, how we start wiring this thing up. All right, so make sure you look at your wiring diagram and make sure it matches up to mine. But basically, how this is going to work is uh, you've got your main power supply coming in here. Uh, this is your neutral wire right here. And this indicates, these two indicators right here, match up to these right here. 
So this is the hot plug, this is the cold plug. And when I say hot and cold, I mean temperature sensor wise. So you're going to run a, a hot wire. It's going to come into port number two. It's going to come over. It's going to go up to port number five. Go around, hook into the other side of your receptacle. Your ground wire, your neutral wire, is going to tie into port number one. It's going to tie into this side of your plug. And then same thing for the cold. There's a hot wire coming in. It's going to plug into this side of the hot. And then there's a neutral that comes in. It's going to plug into this side of the, I'm sorry, of the cold. So anyway, hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to make up a series of pigtails. And what I'm going to do here is just take some wire, uh, red and white wire. Um, all these wires here coming into port number two, port number five, port number seven. Really, all of these are going to be red wires that go across here. So I need a series of pigtails to, to make up. So uh, the way I do that is I'm just going to take a you know, piece of wire. Uh, make sure you kind of visualize where these are going to go. I'm going to make this my number two port and it's going to tie into the main power supply but it's also going to have all these others that come into it and they're going to kind of have to wire net together so I'm going to give myself a little bit of room to work with. Don't, you don't want to make your wires too long because um, if you do you'll you'll have a hard time stuffing them in your box. So anyway then take a, you know, a pair of wire strippers if you've never used these before. Uh, they've got a series of numbers on the side of them um, this one says 16. This is 16 gauge wire, so that's what I want to use is 16. I'm just going to lay it in that groove. Um, where, I'm, where I'm hooking this to the, to the box, one side, it doesn't need to be very long. So, you know, what are you looking at there? Eighth of an inch or something. Just, just a little bit. Just enough to get inside those. Squeeze down and you can kind of pull. And I usually just, uh, that breaks the wire or the coating right there and I can just pull it off with my thumb. Twist those wires up a little bit so they don't get all frayed up while you're messing with other things. And that's it. Now the other side is going to go into a wire nut so I want to give myself a little bit more room to work with there. So I'm probably going to give myself, I don't know, maybe, what is that, three quarters of an inch. Maybe a little more than I need but you get the basic idea. That is a little more than I need, but anyway, you have the basic idea. I'm going to make up a series of these, and then I'll come back when I, when I get to hooking them all into the unit. All right, got all my pigtails cut, and I got them laid out kind of how they're going to go in the unit. This is going to hook into uh, port number, make sure I got these ports right. Two, whoops, I got these backwards. <laughs> there we go. Neutral coming into port number one, hot coming into port number two, hot coming into port number five, port number seven. I'm going to have two hot wires off the side of this receptacle and one neutral coming off the side of this. Now one thing, um, I'm going to go ahead and start getting all this stuff hooked up. One thing you're going to need to do is on the hot side where these hot wires are coming in, there's a tab right there, if you can see that, hopefully you can, uh, inside the, the receptacle that ties these two ports together. On the hot side where your hot wires are coming in, you're going to need to break that tab off. So. You can do that with a pair of pliers, just let me get these out here real quick. But we need to separate that out, make sure I got the, yep, separate that out so that um, you can control each one independently. And if you just, it's hard to do on camera, but if you just bend it back and forth a couple times, it'll snap right out of there. Let me get that snapped out off camera because I can't work at this angle and uh, we'll come back. Took these wires up to this uh, receptacle here. Uh, what I'm going to do is take the end of the wire. Let me get over here. And I'm just going to bend it. Now you may need to use a pair of pliers, but this is pretty soft wire, and I can bend it with my thumbs. Make a little hook. Hook it around the uh, the the bolt on the side of the, the plug, and then take your let me find my screwdriver. I've got way too big of a screwdriver, but it's the one I could find. So take your screwdriver and you can kind of push those wires down in there. Make sure that uh, the open end of your hook, it's wrapping this way around because when you tighten the screw down, it's going to be turning this way and you want it to be tightening that wire down. Just make sure that wire stays in there and tighten this nut down, or this bolt down. And it doesn't need to be super tight, it just needs to be snug. Make sure that wire's in there, it's not going to pull out. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this one, get this one hooked up, and I'm going to hook a white one to this side. You only need one white one on this side. You don't need to do both uh, because this is tied together, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So let me get all that hooked up, and I'll come back, and I'll show you how to hook wires into the, uh, the unit itself. All right, so got the plug pigtails all wired up on there, so it's time to start working on this unit. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the back cover. Just uh, take a little screwdriver and remove that screw. Save that stuff. And then we're going to remove these clips on the side. These are mounting clips, so when you slide it in, 
you'll slide these on on the back side when you mount it on your box. Slide these on the back side and they, they, they smash up against there to, to mount this thing in there to where it stays and it's not wobbly. So you just push the little button there on the side and they slide right off. Save those, you're going to want them later. Okay, now what we've got is, whoop, turn it over. We've got a series of ports right here that line up and there's the wiring diagram again. So what I need to do is go through and open up all these screws right here. So let me get flathead bit. Okay, and these are pretty easy to open up. You just turn the screw. And when you do, you're going to see, uh, maybe you can see it. You can see that the, uh, the port opens up. So then you just take your wire, make sure I'm getting the right one. This is a neutral wire. Take your wire that you've, uh, and make sure the ends are all cleaned up. Your pigtail. Make sure you're getting in the right port. Uh, this is a neutral wire. I'll show you again. Neutral wire is going to run in from port one. There's the main power supply tying in. It's going to go to one side of the plug and it's going to go to the other side of the plug. I only need one neutral wire actually because the plugs are tied together, but you get the idea. So this is going to go into port number one. So I slide it in there, hold it in place, and then I'm going to tighten that screw back down. Okay, so make sure that's in there good and snug. I really kind of gave too much wire right there. I could have trimmed that off a little bit. But anyway, so I'm going to go through and do that with the rest of these. I'm going to have uh, you know, red wire coming in on port number two. I'm going to have a red wire coming in on port number five and a red wire coming in on port number seven. So let me get these hooked up real quick and then I'll come right back and I'll show you the next step. All right, so got all my pigtails attached. Um, I'm going to go start wiring this thing up. Now, you're going to have to work inside your box. Um, you know, do the wiring inside if you're mounting like I am because once you get this all wired up, you can't get it back inside these holes. So, um, first thing I can do though before I shove all this in the box is I can wire up my all my hot wires together. And I'm going to take all the hot wires coming from the unit itself. I'm going to put them together with the hot wire coming out of the main power. Make sure you get the hot wire. That's the hot wire. Not the ground. So I'm just going to stick them all together. Line them all up. And put a uh, wire nut on there. Twist them up, stick a wire nut on there, twist it until it uh, until it tightens up. There we go. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do, but I'm going to have to do this inside the box so it may be hard to film, is I'm going to tie the white wire from my plug, and I'm going to tie that into uh, the, the white wire coming from the unit and the, the neutral wire coming from the main power supply. So those are all going to get tied together, but i got to do that inside the box so it may be hard to film. Uh, and then I'm going to run these two red wires and make sure you know which, one, which side of your, your plug you want to keep as the hot side and which one you want to keep as the cold side to run a fan or to run a heat lamp and hook them into the appropriate ports. And you can see on your wiring diagram, six is heating. So when I get this positioned in here like this, I want the top one to be heating. So I'm going to run that into port number six and then I'm going to run the bottom one into port number eight. And it's the same thing. I'm just going to push the wire in and tighten the screws up. So let me get that down because again, it may not show up on camera real well. I'll film it, but who knows, it may get cut out. So I just got to fish up. Oh, one other thing, the temperature sensor. It's, uh, it's a, it works the same way. It's just two wires stripped. You're going to plug that into ports number three and four, and it doesn't matter which direction these wires go in. You can do it this way or that way. It doesn't really matter. Just one into one side, one into the other. So let me get going here. So, got all that wired up here. Um, you can kind of see what I did again. I you know, went through it once before, but still. I've got um, you know hot wire coming off of port number two, hot wire coming off of port number five, and hot wire coming off of port number seven. And they're all tied in with the main power supply um, hot wire. And then I've got a neutral wire coming off of port number one, a neutral wire uh, that comes off of the uh, receptacle itself, all tied in with the neutral wire from the main power supply. So now I'm going to work on getting this thing mounted in here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, get this over here where you hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Set that in there and I'm going to take these plastic clips and they go on the this way with this part towards the front and I'm just going to kind of uh, slide them on the back. It's hard for me to do this on camera. 
but get them in the, the little groove right there. There we go. Oh, nope, that's not right. Try that again. Oh, it's an awkward angle to work at. There. Good grief, that was harder than it should have been. Do the same thing on the other side. Don't snug them all the way up yet. Just kind of uh, slide them on. And then we're going to put the back on this thing. So bend your wires down out of way. Take your back and it slides on as well. And then we'll put the little screw back in the back here. Let me find that. What did I do with that screw? There it is. I need to change out my screwdriver real quick, so let me go get that. I'm just going to put that screw in there and tighten it back down, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. All right, so I've got the back on there now, so now I can mount this where I want it, and I can push these plastic clips forward, and they'll snap into place. Oh, there we go. And that mounts that pretty solid, so I can push these buttons and stuff and not have to worry about it pushing through. So now I'm going to go ahead and mount my receptacle over here. And again, what I'm going to do there is just push it through the uh, opening, like so. And I've got some screws over here that I'm going to put through there, put a nut on the back side of them, and uh, hold this in place so you can plug in into it. So let me get those screws real quick. And uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and put these in and then come back because this isn't going to be too exciting to watch on film. All right, so got it all set up, got it plugged in. I've got my temperature sensor here. So you can see there's no lights on right here showing that either one of these plugs is working. So we're going to test these out and see if they work. I've got it set up with a little bit of a difference, but basically when it gets below 70 degrees, it should kick on this plug right here for heating, and it should make my, uh, my cell phone kick on because I've got that set there to... Uh, to charge so we'll watch that and we'll see if it kicks on whenever what I'm gonna do is just set this up you know underneath my cold soda here and if you can, whoop, if you can see it I'm just gonna set the charge or the temperature port underneath my cold soda that'll make the uh, the temperature drop on that and we should see my when it gets down to about 70 degrees we should see my cell phone kick on it may take a second to get there there we go and there it is We've got power. So that could easily be rigged in to uh, keep a brooder box at 100 degrees. When it gets down below, you know, 95 degrees, it kicks on, heats it back up to 100 degrees. Um, the cold side, let me unplug here. Plug into the cold side because it's not on right now. You can see uh, I'm not charging right now. Um, so when this heats up above 74 degrees, that cold side will kick off. So let me just hold it in my hand. We'll heat it up. The heat will turn off here in a second. And this is going to go pretty quick. There, the heat turned off, so that port's no longer active. And there, the cool's kicking on, and there's my, there's my power to that port. So, anyway, um, turn this camera around here, and I'll, I'll close this video out. All right, well, you know, as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. You'll be able to, to put this to use. This is a, a good, cheap way to, to run one of these things. I mean, I think this whole project, I already had the box, so I didn't have to buy the box. If you didn't have to buy any extra wire, um, I think I've got less than $20 in this whole project, and I think it's going to work great. So I'm going to use it on a, on a quail brooder. If you want to see that tested out, I'll have that video up in a couple of days, and I'll put the, the link up here um, that you can click on and get to that video and see it actually working in action. So thanks again for watching. As always, uh, God bless.